Access LA, the Latino experience. ¿Sabes lo que es el Latino? ¿No sabes? We'll let you know. Just keep watching. Ahora mismo. Tonight at 10.30 p.m. Romero. There's something about Los Angeles that makes me feel like I'm home, even though I was born and raised in Colorado. I love the people here. So many different faces, and so many stories, including my own story. I got married here, I had a baby girl, and now this really is my home. To celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, I invited some KTLA friends, Ted Garcia and Analia Sarno Riggle, and two of today's hottest Latino comedians to my home. Jackie Guerra was the first Latina ever to star in her own sitcom. She co-starred with Jennifer Lopez and Edward James Olmos in the movie Selena. Come on, Dad. She looked great. You stay out of this, Suzanne. And now she's an entrepreneur with a brand new jewelry line. And she, like comedian Carlos Mencia, feels a deep connection to the Latino community. Carlos has a new television series on Comedy Central, The Mind of Mencia. I live in Southern California, and near the border, we have a very unique road sign. What the hell is this? He admits his humor can be controversial and a little rough, but he says it's all about making you think and laugh. What do you call yourself? A beaner. <laughs> I do, I do. And, and like, for me, honestly, it, it's a way to take power away from the word so that when people say it to me, it, they can't say it, you know what I mean, in a mean way. <laughs> there are a lot of stereotypes out there that really make people angry. And, and uh, what are some for you? There's gotta be something that offends you. Nothing offends you? They all come from somewhere, let's be honest. It's not like white people get together in the middle of America and go, what are we gonna make up about Paquito and Maria this morning? It doesn't work that way, you know what I mean? You, you hear a stereotype like black people like fried chicken and you go, come on, it can't be. And then you ask your black friend, hey, let's go eat somewhere. And he goes, let's go to Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. And you're like, oh my God, you're the guy. You know what I mean? It's, it's like when I could say all I want, you know what, I'm not like that, I'm whatever, blah, blah, blah. But when somebody comes from out of town and they say to me, hey, take me anywhere you want to go, I want to take them to King Taco. Stereotypes don't come from nowhere, but yes, they can be very harmful. They can and I be think very that, harmful. you know, certainly in the entertainment business, we see constant stereotyping. It's like, right. oh, there's a gangbanger. Oh, right. Okay, <laughs> every Mexican actor in town's auditioning right. for the gangbanger. We're talking about in the 50s and 40s, being a Latino was being graceful and beautiful and elegant, and they looked up to you. It was, you were Cesar Romero. Oh, yeah. What happened is we came into a place where in the 60s there was a huge influx of migrant, Mexican, poor, ignorant, mm -hmm. not educated, and then we became this one thing. Look, if you say you're from Spain, people in middle America no, look at you differently no, than if you say you're sorry. Mexican you're because right. Spain brings up beauty and absolutely. elegance, and yeah. Mexican brings up, hola okay. senor, wait, como estas? Wait, wait, That's wait, the wait, mental absolutely. bring up. And we can't deny that the images that come on our televisions and in movies of us as a community are not harmful, because when people who are not Latino meet me, and the first thing out of their mouth is, well, you don't look Mexican. Right. And I'm right. like, right. oh, you don't sorry, have that's my leaf right. blower in the car. Right. I mean, it's just like insane, right? right. Oh, you, you don't sound Mexican. Don't oh, yeah, because, you know, I'm not asking you if you'd like some more water, senor. I mean, right. it's insane. We have a responsibility to educate, as you said, and be that person when we meet people that shows a different side of us. I'm not saying the stereotypes don't exist. Look, we love to party, we're always late, right. we're really fun at weddings, right. blah, blah, blah. Los Angeles, take a look around. It's rich with diversity, culture, history, and hope. The Latino experience in Los Angeles is everywhere. And no matter who you are or where you come from, it's part of your experience too. Hi, my name is Ariana Alvarado. 
and I'm Dominican and Puerto Rican. Hola, mi nombre es Sandra y soy de Michoacán, México. And I am from Arequipa, Peru. I am Cuban, Mexican American. Hispanics make up the largest minority population in the nation with more than 41 million people. And the heart and soul is right here in LA. Los Angeles is the largest Hispanic market in the country. Nearly 50% of LA residents are Hispanic and the majority of them are Mexican. So along with being the second largest city in the United States, LA is also considered the second largest Mexican city in the world, home to an estimated 7 million Hispanics. We have to remember that where we are right now was once Mexico. Mexico felt very deeply that it lost its territory um, to the United States, territory that it was not willing to give up. All of the Pacific Northwestern states, so Washington, Oregon, Montana, part of the Dakotas. And of course, California. It's no wonder we see, smell, and sense the ethnic flavors in every direction of our city. But the Hispanic community is not easily defined. They are Mexican, Puerto Rican, Cuban, Dominican, Central American, South American, Latin American, and Spanish American, from more than 20 different countries. There is a tie that binds us. It's our heritage, and more importantly, it's our future. I think that immigrants should, um, they, they should be allowed over here, definitely, because it's America and it's an equal opportunity country. I think everyone should come in legally because everybody's waiting to come in legally, so there's no one should jump ahead of them. <laughs> It's an issue that's not only controversial, but divisive as well. Illegal immigration is certainly not new, but it seems to be growing at a rapid rate. According to the Census Bureau, there are approximately 10 to 15 million undocumented immigrants living here in the U.S., and more are arriving every day. My family immigrated over here, you know, a while back, and I was born here, so it's like I did my thing, you know, but then all these people that are coming over, and I'm going to be paying for them my tax money, right? And uh, they're getting a lot of free stuff, man. So it's like, I mean, it's cool. They're helping them out. They're getting a lot of free things, but we're working for it. A Gallup poll shows that 32% of Latinos believe immigration levels should be decreased. And 3 in 10 believe the government should not make it easier for undocumented immigrants to become citizens. At this point, I say deport them. That's all we could do. They, they are talking about another work, uh, uh, guest worker program. But you know what, all, all they're going to do is have more disrespect for our laws and more are going to come. The problem really does start with the fact that we criminalize people. So we say they're illegals. What they are is undocumented. undocumented. And what they've come to do is to get a piece of the American dream. It's people who are people undocumented do not commit crimes no. at the rate that they people... Do not commit crimes? At the rate that people who are documented do. Yeah. The average Mexican undocumented worker who comes here for 40 years does not collect Social Security, no. does not collect... But they pay and taxes. And guess what? Less than 1% of the people in welfare are undocumented. Less yes. than 1%. Yes. But, I do but know, they pay taxes. But I do know and, pay they taxes. Work, and they work and they work and they work and they work. Some hospitals have had to shut down yeah. because of. But most of the labor force. The immigrants don't even coming, say it. Yes, coming into the. That is the, the propaganda room. that gets yeah. put out. Prove it. Let's talk about the language thing. Spanish, English. Why should they only speak you Spanish? You are That's completely not... wrong if you think that people come to this country and they go out of their way not to learn well, English. They my... just got here. Let me tell yeah. you something. You're going to well, make my head explode. I can't Let me ahead. tell you something because they're just the cool. ones that are yeah. cooking the food and cleaning the homes and taking care of other people's kids and washing your damn car when you go to the car wash right. and smiling when you give right. them a dollar in the right. 107 degree right. heat. Okay. Do you think that those people left their culture, their country, their family, and 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 um, came however they came and risked their own well-being to come here and, mm, I'm not going to learn English. No, they are busting their butts every day to learn and English. And so did my great-grandparents when they went That's to the packing great. houses up in Ventura County, and That's they great. said, we have to learn English right. because we're in this country now and we want the best for our children and blah, 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 blah. That's right. But you now, know. we ha they did not have ads in Spanish back then. But so they what? had to come and their they life had to, easier. no, they had to adapt. They had to do no, the total you're immersion wrong because and they these had to adapt to this country. You're wrong and you're crazy because no, these kids I, 
are going to school and they're in a city that used to be Mexico and used they're going to, to school yes, used to be. and they're being told that their culture is no good and their language no. is no good and they better learn English and they're trying to learn span, um, science and math in, in a language that they don't understand and then by God, there's nothing wrong with them at home speaking Spanish to their parents and hanging on to their culture. I'm not saying I'm they shouldn't hang to on to their culture. I'm yeah. saying that they can be bilingual at home. I'm not saying that they shouldn't speak but, English, but right. I'm saying that for you to be offended by a billboard in Spanish or anyone to be offended by a billboard in Spanish When did I say I was offended? I never said I was offended. I grew up in East LA. The majority of people there are immigrants. And I'll tell you, the majority of the parents don't care about learning English. And you know how I know? The number one radio station in, in here is Spanish speaking. But that doesn't that mean that, that, that has changed. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 it does. Yes, yes it does. Yes, yes, it does. does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Because look, when you when first get here, I, no, no, no. I grew everybody up in a house. knows. Listen, listen, I let me make a point. Let me make a point only first. I listen to Spanish language radio. Do I speak English? Yeah, but my you know parents what? came what here and named my brother and I after Did they speak English? Did they speak English? Well, they learned English. They didn't well, speak it when they came everybody here. Everybody knows. My dad still can't speak no, English. I'm just telling you, no. from where I grew up, I don't know about you guys, I'm telling you, where I grew up, people don't care. Because if they did, they wouldn't watch Chespirito reruns oh, not, for 20. Yes, they would. No, yes, not. they would. Yes, they would. Yes, they would. Because you, everybody Have knows you one thing. Not true. Of the yes, States? and you know what? And you when I went to France, television? I watched French television. Oh, oh you're yeah. the only because person no, they go out of no, their you way. know why? 24 7, you watch French yes, television. Yes, because That's everybody knows that the only way, the only way to really get yourself into a language. Is to inundate yourself with it. The fact that they want to never, entertain in ever, Spanish does not mean they don't want to learn the language, English. Yeah. I'm not saying forget about what you do. I'm not saying don't talk to your kids in Spanish. People Magazine raves. Inner Shoes is funny and profound. Ah! Truth. It's the best film of its kind since Terms of Endearment. You just ordered for me. I'm an expert order. You'll want to eat with me for the rest of your life. Cameron Diaz is a revelation. Tony Collette is brilliant. And Shirley MacLaine is a national treasure. What's up with Lewis? I don't know what you're talking about. I say just jump him. <laughs> this from a girl who puts a poster stamp on her bottom and calls it a swimsuit. In Her Shoes, with a PG-13. Now playing only in theaters. Nissan Altima. It's Sit and Sleep's 26th year in business, so we're cutting the cake and the prices during our giant anniversary sale. Save hundreds on Simmons, Sealy, Zerda, Spring Air, Stearns of Foster, Merlux, and Chatham and & Wells, and pay no deposit, no interest, and no payments till 2007. Plus, get a free bed frame and even free local delivery. So grab a sweet deal while Sit and Sleep is cutting the cake and the prices during our anniversary sale. Sit and Sleep will beat anyone's advertised price or your mattress is free! I have so many people to thank. All those folks behind the scenes who work so hard to make my life a little easier. I mean, this baby saves people a whole lot of money. Introducing the incredible Albertsons Buy One, Get One Free Turkey Sale. Buy one Village Market frozen basted turkey and get one free with a $25 purchase. Get a jump on the holidays and visit Albertsons today. <gasps> Forgot to thank the produce guy. Albertsons, helping make your life easier. This segment is brought to you by Cancun Destination. Mexicana Airlines offers a two-for-one promotion four nights from just 8.98 to Cancun. Cancun, much more than a beach vacation. Mexico, beyond your expectations. You feel alienated sometimes. You know, you're not sure if you're accepted. As in someone that's born here, they automatically feel accepted. Almost 100 days of being the mayor of Los Angeles, and you think Antonio Viragosa was still trying to get the job. Appearances, meetings, shaking hands, holding babies, and when necessary, riding a horse. We wanted to see what a day in the life of the mayor was like, so we followed him. This day started at 5 a.m., a workout, a haircut, two breakfast meetings, and then we finally caught up with him in Sun Valley where he opened a brand new fire station. Very honored to be mayor of 
the city that my grandpa came to 100 years ago. And it's about uh, showing up in the many communities that make up Los Angeles and connecting with them and, and putting a face on government. The next stop is a meeting with the Alliance of Neighborhood Councils. It's their chance for a one-on-one -on -one with the mayor. And then it's back to City Hall for a closed-door meeting. He describes this day, which is scheduled to end at 11 o'clock at night, as typical. And by the way, did I mention it's not a work day, it's Saturday.